Hey guys, um, James here. Uh, just thought I'd quickly weigh in on uh, Angus from uh, Makers, uh, Maker Muses' recent video post about um, is 3D printing killing us? Uh, yes, I can definitely agree with him on, on uh, a few of the points there uh, that he has pointed out. If you haven't had a look at the, um, the video he's posted, please go and have a look over here. Um, but uh, Angus did bring up a couple of valid points about some of the filaments that we're trying out with printers now with nylon hips and uh, <coughs> filaments containing formaldehyde. Now, um, I'm, a, I'm a very firm believer that 3D printing is still quite in its infancy. Yes, it's, it's here and it's, it's here for makers like us, but it's still very much a maker thing. Um, so as you can see, my printer, for example, is still out here in the shed. But mine doesn't live in a house. Um, and if you were um, looking at building a 3D printer or you were concerned about some of the safety aspects about it, I'd have to, to recommend to you the same thing I've done, is to you know, put it in your maker shed. Um, most makers like ourselves, we're nerdy and all that sort of stuff, we have tons of tools outside and, and all that sort of stuff, so having another tool out here the 3D printer is not a big hassle. Um, I myself just stuck mine in a, a little server rack. I mean, you can pick these up on eBay for around $50. Um, you know, with glass fronts, lockable. I threw some LEDs in it so I can see what I'm doing. Um, but yes, uh, n not only is having it in your house dangerous um, from a, from a chem potential chemical perspective, uh, we all know ABS doesn't smell nice. If you're printing with ABS, yes, PLA is fine. But there's also the fact that your printer is a hot thing. It's not living in your kitchen your ki or, or anywhere like that. Your kitchen's designed to have hot things in it. There's precautions around that. Your printer sits at 260 degrees when printing ABS with a bed that's moving of 100 degrees. Uh, and there's just so many little factors there that could go wrong. Um, so you don't want that in your house realistically. And, and my, I myself, I have a couple of kids. Um, I've actually got three, but number four coming soon. And I don't want them sticking their hands in the printer. So another reason that it lives outside in a lockable uh, rack, so the kids can't. No, I can't lock it. Ha! Um, in a lockable rack, so the kids can't play. Um, but you know, I look uh, to, to anyone that is concerned. About, as I said about printing, um, <laughs> anyway, to anyone that is concerned about printing, um, it's, it's a very simple. Put your equipment outside, um, check, uh, as Angus said, check the MSDS or any of the plastics that you get. Just because you've gotten it from a filament supplier and they say it's ABS, sometimes it's not. PLA is a great uh, example of stuff that isn't exactly PLA. I have a couple of rolls, rolls of PLA out there, they come from three different providers, they're totally different plastics. They smell different, they melt different. Uh, if the vendor will give you an MSDS, great, otherwise ask what they put in it. Because they don't always just put straight PLA or straight ABS, you know, that sort of stuff in. They'll put, um, you know, flexibility enhancers. They'll put all the impact um, uh, additives and all that sort of stuff in there as well. So getting that sort of stuff from your vendor can be helpful. But uh, personally, I stick mine outside. Um, it's all set up with a Raspberry Pi. You can monitor it. Um, I will do a video on getting... Um, Octoprint working with your printer. Um, in fact, I think Tom from Tom's Guides has a good one. Um, if if I can find that, I'll link that down here. Um, otherwise, uh, yeah, go and check Angus's video out. I've got to got to give him a shout out about um, calling it out. Um, he does have a lot of guides, a lot of videos, um, and frequently has planes flying over his house while he's doing tutorials. So check him out, and thanks for watching.